Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Content Creators University um, Season 2. <laughs> very excited. Very, very excited. And today we have another amazing show for you guys. We're about to talk about how you can set up and get the perfect audio. You guys already know that when it comes down to high quality production audio, the professionals will tell you that is it is the most important aspect of your production. Audio is everything, and your audio has to be top notch. So today we're about to talk about um, audio, uh, audio, and uh, the things to consider, uh, the techniques, the microphone. We're, go- we're about to go dive into the story of the evolution of a. Uh, audio sound and things like that fun fun things but very educational very informative um and i am very excited about our guest behind stage but before we even talk about and bring him on stage um again big thanks to all our sponsors and all our listeners that support this show for those of you who do not know this show is sponsored and listener supported right so we need your support. We need your help. We appreciate the support every time. And again, I want to thank the folks that always show up live every single week and connect with us during the live stream. We appreciate you guys. For those of you who do not know me and new to this platform, my name is JP Hatech. I am a cinematographer, branding expert, and software developer. I help companies, businesses elevate their value proposition with high quality visuals, videos, live stream, professional graphic design, web design, and so forth. So if you want to connect with me, of course, go to my website, which is jphighttech.com. If you're listening, it's jphighttek.com. Now, I want to thank Charles Jackson Media for being a faithful sponsor of this platform. Now, if you're all about elevating your studio presence, understanding which camera to buy, which lens to buy, which microphone to set up, how to set it up, the lighting in your studio, the overall thing. You want to connect with him and you want to go to charlesjackson.media, book yourself a free consultation and see how he can help you. Charles Jackson Media is an amazing company that I have the honor to partner with on this platform. Also talking about our sponsors, we have another ad coming up right after this and we'll be talking about who will be next in the Content Creators University. Stay with me, don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. All right, all right. And now let's look at who will be next in the Content Creators University. Before I talk about her, well, that ad you just watched, that is RTN Streams. And RTN Streams is your best companion to your eCam. I am using eCam right now to broadcast this live show. And eCam's allowing me, is the encoder, right? That's allowing me to broadcast it out. However, RTN Streams is the solution that's allowing me to decode this so that you guys can watch it, not just on YouTube, Facebook, my website, but also my Roku TV application and my Fire TV application. So if you want to have your own Roku TV application or Fire TV application or be able to have a premium experience and elevate the experience that your viewers will have with your live stream, go ahead and check out RTN Streams just by going to rtnstreams.com. And of course, they are offering you guys some free overlays. So if you're looking for some 100% free overlays, um, also looking amazing just like the one i'm using right now go ahead and visit that website you will not regret it now next week we will have this amazing guest Juana taylor and we'll be talking about the power of networking how to leverage network to elevate your business right um that is very important especially in this digital age that we're living in network is everything right it's through network that uh networking that we're able to have those amazing guests onto the platform and i want to encourage you guys to share Show up next week, same time for this conversation. Looking forward to it, right? Now we have another guest coming into the place. Dr. Elo is going to be here next Wednesday as well. And with Dr. Elo, we're talking podcasts, right? Uh, Very amazing. Today we're talking about audio. And then next week we're talking about podcasts, how you can use your broadcasting software to have professional podcasts. Amazing things. Looking forward to that conversation as well. Now let's talk about the guest that we have behind stage, 
Joel. Now, Joel, he has an eclectic background, an extensive background when it comes down to audio. And of course, he's coming onto the stage right now to talk to us about things that we need to consider and we need to understand right after this. Stay with me. All right. All right. Hey, Joel, how's it going? Welcome to the show. Doing great. Thanks for having me here. Good to be here. <laughs> all right. All right. First of all, I want to thank you for accepting to come on the platform and be our professor today. So today we want to see <laughs> Professor Joel, right? <laughs> here comes the oh. Right. <laughs> I know. Right. I know. I know. Right. <laughs> first thing first. Right. I want to take the time and allow you to introduce yourself for the folks that do not know you. Uh, who's Joel um, and why I brought you here? <laughs> sure. Well, you know, as you know, I, 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 I have kind of two parts of me. I've, I've got the coach who does a lot of work with conflict uh, to collaboration and helping people get there. And mm -hmm. uh, the other side of me is I've had a long, long history long enough that I call it 15 plus years to not scare anybody um, oh, in the wow. audio and video and production business. And um, I guess you tapped me and said, Joel, will you come on? And I said, well, you know, I, be, I don't often talk about audio stuff, but sure, let's do it. <laughs> let's have some fun. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, know, I right? Putting together some stuff so that people who are, you know, maybe they feel frustrated, maybe they feel confused, not sure how to deal with audio and video and production, to really understand how it works, as opposed to right. just buy the stuff that I own and, and maybe that'll work for you. Well, it's very important. It's very, very important. Audio is one of the most important things in your gear that you need to spend the time and master or at least set it up properly so that people mm -hmm. can enjoy your broadcast and enjoy the things you're saying. Right. If your audio is terrible, nobody is going to want to listen to you. So yeah. that's why I'm so excited about today's broadcast. Now, before we talk about, you know, techniques that we may want to think about and things like that, um, mm -hmm. how you have dealt with audio, right? What have you seen in the evolution of audio until today that you think is fun to share with us today? <laughs> well, so I'll have to admit something about uh, how long I've been around in answering that question. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, I think the first piece of audio gear I ever played with that wasn't like a little handheld thing, Tascam had a four-track cassette audio recorder that people were doing demos on. You know, it looks like a little cassette recorder. Mm -hmm. People would do four-track demos. Uh, at, at, for a while, I was designing studios and doing uh, recording work. And had, uh, you know, you see in the old movies, these big open reel things. Right. I had an Otari eight track recorder, uses half inch tape. Um, and that that was, uh, you know, you'd, you'd spend these days, all this stuff just kind of works. Back then you'd have to spend time with a screwdriver adjusting the alignment of stuff when it started sounding funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, oh boy. Would you say that we um, have taken away the knowledge that the average person may um, have in regards to the audio, um, mm. is that making us, in other words, lazy in learning and understanding how audio works? Would you say that or or no? I think you know I wouldn't I wouldn't I don't think I'd ever say lazy, but but there's a kind of experience you get with having you know in in those original systems there was no run it on the computer, it was a big board and plugging in wires all over the place and just going through hooking things up made it much clearer how things work you know you have a mixing board right. you've got a delay you got a reverb you got this and that you got the feed out to the house and of course it's always the cables that blow up but at least <laughs> you know at least you know when you hook it up you get a sense of how that stuff works and like today mm -hmm. when people try to figure out things like loopback uh, i know i and other people try and explain it as it's wires for the inside of your computer Right. But if you've never worked with real wires, that doesn't help. <laughs> yeah, so. of course, of course. Yeah, absolutely. You need to be able yeah. to picture that and, and understand that he's point A to point B, and this is what right. the connection is and uh, all that. But for the folks that do not know, how is it that you're so knowledgeable about audio things and, and, and set up and connecting connections and things like that? What did you do in your, in your life for you to be so knowledgeable about it? Uh, well, you know, which, which length answer would you like? <laughs> 
<laughs> you know part of the story. So, um, you know, way back, I ended up when I was in school doing some audio work. I was a campus hi-fi rep for some high-end stereo stores. And so we ended up doing a lot of listening times on with, with folks on all kinds of different systems. And I, I think that's one of the keys. You learn to listen right? Mm -hmm. that, and it's a different kind of listening. It's not just listening to the words. It's, it's listening to what does the sound actually sound like? You know, is there too much high, too much low in between? And after that, I ended up through a whole bunch of accidents and just meeting people uh, as a touring sound engineer. So I did 100 to 150 shows up and down the East Coast and out to Michigan with a fusion jazz rock group, an eight piece group with a horn section. In mm -hmm. all kinds of settings, from little clubs up to, I think the biggest outdoor show we did was 17,000 people. So oh, Snap. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I, I'm not quite sure about the number of people, but they said they went through 750 kegs of beer that year, that, that day. <laughs> so, oh, wow. That's insane. <laughs> yeah. That's a yeah. lot of people. Yeah. I was at the Red Mile Racetrack in Lexington, Kentucky. Um, and so, you know, mm -hmm. the inside horse racetrack. Uh, so... You know, when you do that much in so many different places, in so many different venues, and also do some live recording, and when I got off the road, I ended up designing recording studios for a couple of years, um, and and video studios. I was on the audio team for putting together the first build of the New England Sports Network. So that was my first nice. get a sense of what video production looks like. Um, so that's, that's kind of bits and pieces, but um, that's where a lot of this came from. And put it aside, mm -hmm. did all kinds of things and all of a sudden everything went computer and it's all back <laughs> i know right and now we have an advantage over that and uh we can spend less and have way better audio than we yeah. used to have um so Dude. that is fantastic um but mm -hmm. why is it right i know a lot of times they say professionals say that audio is the most important thing audio is the most important but why is it that audio is the most important i understand people want to hear good yeah. audio but why do you think with your background that people care so much about the audio and the sound. Yeah. Well, on video, you know, if you're watching captions, it doesn't matter, right? And, and if you're watching on your phone on captions, the audio doesn't matter. But if you're actually listening, <clears throat> what you're probably watching the video for is to hear something and understand something new. Mm -hmm. If it's really hard to understand what somebody's saying, that was the point you're there. I mean, you know, unless you're watching like a TikTok about exploding three fire trucks with with a with <laughs> of, you know, <laughs> and, and I think right, that's right. what really cuts it is that is that if it's hard to understand what's being said, the back of your head is is working overtime just trying to figure out the words and can't really spend the time understanding the content. So yeah, okay, I, don't know if I see. Yeah, that helps. I mean, the the focus is to be able to understand the information or capture the information you're sharing. So yeah. the only way to transfer information from one point to another is using sound. And um, sound is why that that's the starting point, right? Now, even right. a video without sound is useless. Yeah. See, well, the thing the, is that the early uh, comedy stuff, right? <laughs> the, 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 they just unless you're. Like, <laughs> but I, so I should correct myself right? I should say yeah, most honest. videos right yeah. <laughs> but tell me um yeah. how is it that you can buy an expensive microphone and still mm. sound terrible what's mm. in it what, what what's in the microphone or what is the deal that, that we can spend a lot of money on the microphone a lot of money on the mixer and as we connect it we sit down you speak into the microphone and you sound terrible. Yeah. What are we missing here, Joel? Well, there's a few parts to the picture, right? It's not just the hardware. Um, mm -hmm. The part that a lot of people don't think about is your instrument, right? Hmm. I mean, if you're if you're not if if you're not speaking clearly, you're not going to be heard clearly. So the first right. the first part <clears throat> is really working on your instrument. By the way. For mine, I apologize. I've been teaching for eight and a half hours today, so I'm a little bit rough. <laughs> but um, but so that's the first part. The second part is is something that people call mic technique. There actually are techniques for how to work with microphones. Like, for instance, how to talk on a mic. So in this mic, I've, I've had to take the windscreen away. If I go, that's mm -hmm. going to sound really bad, right? But you can do that either by playing around with the windscreen. You can actually change the way you talk to not end up creating problems with the mic. How you place the mic makes a difference. 
um, whether you have adjusted it in a way that works for the particular mic you have, um, and also what mic you choose. There's I, 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 So I'll go up on a little bit on a soapbox here. A lot of discussion about what's the best microphone. Right. There's no best microphone. It's what microphone matches your voice and the style of what you're trying to project. Because, for instance, we, we were in a studio, took a few singers, and had them compare mics. And we had a whole rack of stuff. Mm -hmm. Two women. With one of them, the one we landed on, hands down, everybody said, this is the best one, was, I think, a three or $4,000 AKG. Okay. 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 Yeah, it should sound right for that price, right? <laughs> you the should, right? One, <laughs> the other one we tried on that mic, and everybody said, yeah, it's just not doing it. That's that's not really cool. That's that's just okay. And mm -hmm. we went down the rack of stuff. You want to guess which one we landed on for her? Which one is that? The universal choice was a hundred buck SM58. No way. Uh huh. No way. For her voice and how she was singing, and the material, it was. I mean, everybody just she she started on that mic, and everybody just said. Okay, we're done. That's it for her. That's the one. Hmm. But how is so, that? I mean, <laughs> what's in the mic, uh, or how is it manufactured, or what are the yeah. things there? Why is that that affordable microphone was right. the winner, and not a super yeah. super expensive microphone? And the reason why this is so important is because mm. uh, we've gotten to the point where we believe that the more money we spend on the microphone, the better mm. we're gonna sound. Which in reality that's not true, so that's why we're having this conversation so that we can learn more about what's in the yeah. microphone and how's how's built and those type of things. So let us know, sure. Joel. Okay, well let's do a little um, do a little show and tell. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> let's do it. Let's go. So so I have I have a couple of props as usual. Um, let's talk a little bit about how sound gets generated, right, and what what mm -hmm. it is. I have a, insides of a speaker sitting around. This is from a loudspeaker. And, you know, we don't really think about sound that much. Sound is really compressed air traveling back mm -hmm. and forth. And so the speaker, this cone moves in and out. And as it moves, it pushes the air around back and forth. Right. And, you know, it sounds really weird, but that's, that's what we're really hearing. And somehow our brain turns that into words and sounds and things like that. Mm. Well, not a lot of energy in air moving back and forth. You're not going to like push right. a lawnmower, it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Then you got a microphone, and I just I had this on the table. This is is this real sure? Yeah, it's a fifty eight a fifty eight A. So it's a, a sure beta fifty eight. Um, I have a cheapie that I pulled apart just to show some of the insides. But with these microphones, what they're going to do is they're going to pick up that sound. The sound moves in front of them. But you know how are they going to do that? Uh, this one was a cheapie that I just pulled apart, right? You unscrew the top, and mm -hmm. it cost twelve bucks, so I'm okay about taking it apart, right? <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Believe it or not, you get a SM58 ripoff on Amazon for twelve bucks. So, <laughs> so when you pull it apart, <clears throat> you know there's a connector. Okay, that's fine. We've all seen those. There's a little bit of electronics, and this is the business end of the microphone. So it's hmm. actually a little speaker in reverse, right? It is literally one of these in reverse. So when the, when the air moves, it pushes back and forth on this front that moves a little piece of wire mm -hmm. and creates a little teeny bit of voltage coming out, a little bit of electricity. You could imagine that that's not creating a lot of electricity, right? Right, right, because of all. the size of it. It's tiny and it's just the air hitting it. And so, um, so these are what's called dynamic microphones. They, mm -hmm. They're physical, like a piece of plastic that moves around or paper moves around. Mm -hmm. It weighs a bunch compared to the air. So it's not really accurate. You know, the air moves it and it, it really takes a lot of pressure to move it. The really right. fancy microphones, like the one I'm using, uh, are what's called a condenser mic that has a really fine foil of metal. It's so light that if you if you cough on it, it'll it'll shatter some of them. But that makes it mm. much more sensitive and able to hear, basically able to receive finer detail. Right. So so, so different mics are either finer or coarser in how much detail they have, but also right. what ranges they 
push and don't push. So like this one, the 58 that everybody sees in bars, right, you know, it basically right. just <laughs> run it under a truck and it'll be fine. <laughs> so, it has the so bit of a would you say, Oh, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I just had a question as you're speaking because this is so interesting. So uh, yeah. folks, sorry about the folks that are listening to the podcast. Again, if you want to see the demonstration, hop onto YouTube is JP had tech that uh, is youtube.com for slash JP had tech reviews to see the demonstration really amazing stuff. So let me ask you this, Joel, would you say that the difference between and correct me if I'm wrong, you're the professional here, right? The difference between the dynamic and the, the condenser microphone and the dynamic microphone is the sensitivity it has um, in regards to your voice. Would That's that be one the of foundational difference. Yeah, it's one of the differences. The sensitivity is much higher on a condenser mic, which some people think is great and some people hate because mm. if you're on a condenser mic, little things get picked up. If you're right. breathing, you can hear it. If there's sound around you, you can hear it. Mm -hmm. So, um, but on the other hand, the way it sounds picks up the richness of your voice much better. Uh, the other difference is that many microphones are set up to purposefully push parts of your voice. So like the 58 mm -hmm. kind of pushes the mids and ups so that the upper part of your voice gets gets accentuated a little bit. Right, Whereas some right. are designed to be neutral. And that's the stuff when you ask about which singer and which mic and why, Mm -hmm. There's all kinds of coloration stuff that like it either fits or it doesn't. And it, you just have to try them. Oh, wow. This is amazing. It's really, really amazing. We're going to go ahead and take a, a, a break real quick and come back. Now, when we come back, I want us to actually dive into uh, practical things such as, okay, what do we do? In order, mm -hmm. okay, um, the, the mic, the most expensive mic is not the solution. So now I have a mic. What are the things I can do practically in my studio in order to improve my audio quality? And also, what do you have uh, that you're using? How are you filtering your audio? And how do you have your setup so we can learn from you? So a lot of fun stuff we'll be talking about uh, right after this ad. So we'll be right awesome. back, folks. Don't go anywhere. <laughs> Hey man, this is DJ Strick and you're watching Content Creators University with JP High Tech. Man, don't miss a thing. Stay right here. Yes, yes, Welcome yes. To <laughs> Good to be here, man. Good to be here. This is amazing, man. This space you've created, phenomenal, bro. Absolutely phenomenal. I'm excited to be here, man. Thank excited. You, sir. Content Creators University, man. Woo! Yes, sir. Here. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Welcome to the show, Lenita. <laughs> uh, what a pleasant surprise. Thank you for the welcome and for the amazing introduction. folks welcome back if you just joining us well i want to let you know we've been having a lot of fun with who i call today professor joel he's going to the history of uh sound and audio and uh things to know when uh, we're talking about how audio is captured into a microphone um, and he did a great comparison uh between a speaker and the very very affordable sm58 or very cheap microphone that the, the ones that you see you will like, no, that's not it i need to spend 400 dollars and get the sm7b or uh get a really really um expensive microphone in order to sound better we've learned that 
that's not the solution, right? Um, you don't sound better because you bought an expensive microphone. You sound better because that microphone goes well with your voice and a whole lot of other things in your setup in order to filter the sound. So all that we're learning today, which is something that is important because in any production, the sound is the number one thing that is allowing anybody to be able to hear you, uh, capture what you're saying, the information, and connect with you. So that is a big deal. Now, before I bring him over here, here, folks, I want to let you guys know. Um, go ahead and, and connect with us, right? Put a comment in the comment section and talking about comment. I want to go ahead and give a shout out to the folks in the comment section. Cree, first lady Cree, thanks for being here. Um, I see Dream World. Hey, Dream World, thanks again for being here and co commenting in the comment section. Don Howard, how's it going, Don? I appreciate you being here with us um, and connecting on the live stream. Angelica, thanks for being here. Angelica Prather, and look at that. We have Chocolate Twist. Hey, how's it going? Thanks for being here. And look, Miss Jill is in the comment section. And <laughs> look at what she's saying. She said <laughs> she used to sing. That's that's true, folks. And she has an amazing voice, if you didn't know, behind the scenes information. And uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for connecting with us. And for the folks that do not know, let me go ahead and share that with you. Uh, because we do have a private, private Facebook group that I want to encourage you guys to go and connect on. And this is it right here, right? Go ahead and look for this Facebook group called Creators Unleashed by Content Creators University. Go ahead and connect with us. Join the private group and let's all build this, uh, you know, mindset of winners, mindset of continuous learners um, in this digital space that we have. So now let me go ahead and bring Joel back. All right, Joel, welcome back to the space. Thanks for being with us and thanks for teaching us all the amazing things you've been teaching. So now let's be practical now because I know a lot of folks are like, OK, I just need to know. I have a studio, I have a space, I bought an expensive mic, I'm still sounding bad. What are you, for you the top five things I need to do in order to sound better? What are those things? Let's see, top five things. I'll see if I come out at five. All right, maybe <laughs> About, more. <laughs> I think the first one is to listen to the space you're in. And um, a lot of people don't really listen to this. They listen to their voice, but not the space. If you've ever listened to what it sounds like in a bathroom, right, or in a gymnasium, there's right. all kinds of sound that comes back from the room. And it, it's, it's almost impossible to hear that while you're talking. The way to check it out is to actually record and then play it back and see if it sounds like you hear in a recording studio or, a, or like a DJ on the radio where you don't hear a lot of background, you can't tell what the shape of the room is. If you can tell anything about the shape of the room from mm -hmm. your recording, then you probably need to, the simple way to put it is, put a bunch of fuzzy stuff around the room. <laughs> you kind of put, you know, couches, carpet, uh, you can get hanging, uh, they call them sound absorbing uh, mm -hmm. carpet, you know, carpet, sound absorbing blankets. Right. Um, because especially if you're a streamer, like they say, anything out of the shot doesn't exist. So you can hang Correct. up some, you know, sound absorbing. Car Who cares? Doesn't doesn't mm -hmm. matter what it looks like. Um, yeah, but that would be the first thing: is tame down the environment so you're not fighting that. Um, because if you've got a bad room, the mic isn't going to save you. Um, and especially <laughs> if you buy a good mic, right? We just talked about how really expensive mics are more sensitive. Mm -hmm. They're going to pick up the room more than a cheaper mic. Hmm. So the first thing is tame down the room. Um, the second is <clears throat> to make sure you've got your levels right. Mm -hmm. That, um, And in particular on YouTube, um, there are level standards for how loud you're supposed to be. If you don't have fancy, fancy metering, don't worry about it. Just record a test and play back some other folks' video and play back yours and see if it sounds about the same volume. Because mm -hmm. uh, there's this thing that happens except for ads you know we all hate how the ads blast you in the face but <laughs> uh, right <laughs> right, <laughs> but, right but people also react to volume so if you listen to a video mm -hmm. and your video is much quieter believe it or not they're going to tend to flip away to something else because hmm. just the idea of cranking up the volume is like these days i mean three seconds and you're out basically nobody has any attention span pretty much yes <laughs> <laughs> so that's two. I don't know. Do you want more? <laughs> well, I was going to get into uh, and it does actually more than two, uh, because you talked about uh, having a clear knowledge of the space you're in. Right. For me, that's one. Two will be what you said, which is uh, recording yourself. Right. 
and playing it back to yourself to see right. how you sound and if you sound correct, right? Or if you sound the way you want to sound, right? And three right. will be, okay, um, controlling your levels, right? Mm -hmm. Controlling your levels, understanding the different levels you have, right? Mm -hmm. And four, for me, will be, okay, uh, seeing if you're um, active enough as you're speaking, right? Um, and that is very important. And five for me is what you mentioned earlier will be the microphone positioning. Because when you were explaining, you, you did mention uh, how you position your microphone because that also makes a difference. In reality, you've been dropping a whole lot more than five. <laughs> there you go. And it's I've been taking notes. <laughs> so yeah, well, as, as an example for the microphone position stuff, let me back up and be over to the side a little bit. You know, like let's pretend I'm a person who says, I don't want anything of the mic in the shot. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to back up a bit over here. What does that sound like? That doesn't sound very good, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's okay. It's but okay. if I get the right on the mic, now all of a sudden it sounds like I'm narrating a book or I'm on the radio or whatever, right? That is true. And, I mean, well, let me try yeah. the same thing. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. So what's going on? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? Clear difference. The, the Clear other one sounds like difference. on a laptop across the room. <laughs> But, but the fun That's thing true. is the distance, the distance matters a huge amount. Mm -hmm. If you double the distance, like if I go from here back to here, I'm only twice as far away, but all of a sudden it is sounding different, right? You know? Right. And so right. what people, as they practice more, they figure out what is really the right way. And, and we just talked about distance, but there are some other things about what you do with mics to make them work. Um, but this idea of thinking about, have, it, it's like an athlete. Athletes don't just pick, you know, a basketball player doesn't just pick up a basketball and throw it. Right. They've got there are certain things, things that you have to do. Muscle uh, memory it's the right thing to make it work. And voice is the same way. Well, talking about doing the right thing or talking about filtering, right? Um, mm -hmm. You are sound junkie, I want to call it right, in the goo layer. <laughs> You're very critical about your sound. Um, and that is awesome. Right. That's why you're here um, with yeah. your background, extensive background, and all that. Now, let me, I want to ask, how are you filtering your sound um, mm -hmm. through here? Um, because mm -hmm. I know you have some fancy things going on. Go ahead and share that with us here. Let me go ahead. As a matter of fact, I have the right thing to do. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, share the screen here. Give me one second. Okay. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and change this camera right here and put it on your mixer because I know you have some fancy things right there. So let's uh, go. Yeah, Talk yeah. to us about what this is all about. Is, isn't this overkill, Joel? Uh, for the folks that are listening to the podcast, yeah. I'm going to let him tell you what we're looking at right here. Go ahead, Joel. Right. And I will say, this is more than you need to just do one voice and do a podcast. A part of why I do this is I spent years touring and I used this. This is called Pro Tools. It's a pro professional mixing console that runs in software. You know, if you're, if you're used to Ecamm, it's kind mm -hmm. of Ecamm for audio. You know, runs on the computer and mixes stuff together and lets you adjust it and all. Um, but the reason it's set up like this is that during the day, I'm working with corporate clients all the time and they have all different kinds of stuff. I got to connect to WebEx and Zoom and da -da -da, Teams. And so this is all pre configured that I can just get a hit up, hit a couple buttons and be all configured to work with them. But just to talk about what's coming in here, you see this one on the left where you see the green going up and the yellow coming down. Mm -hmm. So that's the input that my mic is actually hooked up to. And um, if I turn off all the processing, let's just turn this stuff off. So now you're hearing just the raw mic. Probably sounds a little bit different, right? Mm -hmm. So it does. First, yeah. The first thing that I'm using is what's called a noise gate. And this noise gate, I'll turn it on. You see, when I talk, that yellow bar goes up. And when I stop talking, it goes down. It's like an automatic volume control. So mm -hmm. noise gates are really good for taking out background because this is a very sensitive mic. I tend to run a noise gate with uh, on it because otherwise you're going to hear all kinds of things. Well, um, talking but, about the mic, would you please tell us exactly which mic you're using? Oh, I'm going to get people all, all excited. Um, <laughs> this, is one, this is one that folks here are not talking about usually. It's called a Neumann TLM 103. Um, this is one of the fairly standard studio mics that are used for audiobooks. Uh, if you listen to national public radio, there are almost mm -hmm. always this or a Neumann U87. Um, you don't need this to do a podcast, but you know, with my background, I have stuff sitting around. That's that's right. why, why, why not use it? So, uh, so one thing is the noise gate, and the next is this thing called a compressor. 
So now you're listening. I've got a noise gate. Matter of fact, let me just turn that a little bit less sensitive. So now let's open up a compressor. And a compressor is something that automatically changes the volume, but sort of takes the peaks down a bit. Now you're listening to just the raw mic now. Probably sounds okay, right? Mm -hmm, it does. And now I'll talk and I'll turn on the compressor while I'm talking. And you'll probably hear that it brings up some fullness. You can sort of hear the body better. Because right. what it's doing is pulling down the peaks so that the, the, less, the less loud things sort of fill in so you get some more richness. Is hmm. that how, how that sound? Yeah, it's yeah. a it is more is fuller, right? Um, yeah. There's more volume, not volume, but not like you you sound louder, but you just <laughs> sound more present, as if mm -hmm. you know you've gone closer to the microphone. Or something it's just a compressor that adding that to it. That's fantastic. Right. And so the other one that I don't use this all the time, but there's a thing called an oral exciter. That um, there were some radio stations in Boston that, you know, how when you're making stuff, you're making food, and you add a little salt, and you say. Oh, that's good, but not quite enough. Let me add some mm -hmm. more. You know, that's not quite enough. Add some more. You've got to be careful with oral exciters because you can really go nuts <laughs> on these things. And But so here it is. Here's with off. And I'll just say check one, two, and I'll do some things that have some consonants in it and keep talking. And you'll probably hear that it changes the character of the consonants a little bit. It adds a little right. sizzle. To the top end. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So let me exaggerate it and really go too far. Mm. Okay, now I probably sound like I've got a whistle and a whoosh going on that's in the top. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, so that's what happens when you go too far. But when you put a little bit of salt and sugar on it, it, it just adds another different kind of texture to it. Um, so, so that's a couple of examples. And, you know, just for goofing around, you asked if I could do this. Um, there are all kinds of effects you can add. Like, uh, I was just about to ask. <laughs> How are we doing now? This is definitely a high class mic, right? We're, we're sounding we're sounding just awesome here. <laughs> this is pretty cool, folks. I mean, this is fun. Yeah. Uh, talking about yeah. being engaging and uh, you know doing things during your podcast or your video, and this yeah. software, you know, that is a plugin uh, for this Pro Tool software that will allow you to change your voice on the fly. That's pretty nice. Uh, do you have another voice to put up for us? Sure. And actually, one thing I want to mention is that these kind of plugins are not, you, you don't have to be using Pro Tools. There are other tools that can do this. You can do some, some of these things with Audio Hijack, mm -hmm. uh, Logic Pro, things like that. Um, uh, one thing that I've been doing lately, and I don't know if I should, well, I'll explain it anyway. Um, we've talked about this, is a lot of times I actually run speakers, which we tell everybody not to do, right? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> with some careful processing, you can get away with that. I am not doing that here because this is like important. I don't want it to mess up. Mm -hmm. But if I'm on Zoom calls and WebEx calls all day long, these days I just do it on speakers and nobody hears any feedback. And the way that works is I have a limiter. So if you, why don't you go ahead and try talking and we'll watch what's happening here. Hey, what's going on? What's going on? Yeah, as you can see, right? uh, for the folks that don't know, it's picking up right there. Uh, yeah. Very so interesting. The the yellow is the automatic gain reduction. That's where it's clamping the peaks down. And mm -hmm. what that does, you can run the speakers at really low volume, still hear it, but it's not enough volume that it causes feedback. <laughs> now, like, like to so say. What do, yeah, what I do is I do that and I put some oral exciter on it like we listen to, then the mm -hmm. sizzle a little easier to hear what's going on at really low volume. So that way I'm not like having to do earbuds all day, which I'm like really happy about. Well, that's a blessing. And like this say, folks, like this say, do not do this at home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is like the, right. like the racing car demos, right? <laughs> it's <laughs> exactly right. This is the professional, the, the, the professor Joel that can yeah. get away because he understands the nuances and the separation, uh, the how the sound is traveling, bringing feedback into his microphone. He can control the leveling and tune it down with his professional recording software. Do not do this at home and say, and, Professor Joel said I could get away with a speaker. Yeah, now no, you're having problems in echo. If I can add in on this, right? Mm -hmm. Notice that even I am not using speakers for this mm -hmm. <laughs> because I know it'll cause problems. <laughs> so true, just an example of what's possible, right? Yeah. True. I cool. mean, if it's such an important uh, broadcast, such an important recording, um, don't, don't, you know, risk it. 
Make sure you do the things the right way, like the professionals will tell you to do, and you have no problem. If you want to get away with it and you start having problems uh, in the middle of your broadcast, then guess what? <laughs> you chose to go that route. Um, but this is very interesting. Now, I know that some folks might want to learn more. Um, how can they learn more um, from you and really take the time to dial in and how to set it up step by step and more things because i know there's a whole lot more that goes into um having the perfect audio we've given folks some jams but there's more so what do you have do you have any support system or anything talk to us about it please yeah so i have to say part of this is from you inviting me to be here and us talking folks in the community have poked me for a while about you should do something about this so here we go um, I, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I actually put together a workshop. And uh, if you go to joelfoner.me slash three mic techniques, um, I'm actually going to do a workshop on mic techniques via 90 minute workshop. And we're going to do actual hands on. This is not just lecture. Actually work with your stuff, figure out how you can sound better. And what I'm thinking about doing is really putting this together to be something that'll be a monthly thing where we pick a topic every month, have people who are interested, um, get together and maybe have it be sort of membership thing. Um, but that, that would be one. And the other is um, that you can sign up on my email list um, and get uh, get notifications of that. And I guess we can drop the links into the uh, uh, the chat. Um, and I'm also, I'm all, any, on social media, you basically find me as Joel Foner almost anywhere. J-O-E-L-F-O-N-E-R on Twitter, LinkedIn, Facebook. Um, so uh, reach out and connect. I'm around. I'm happy to help. So oh, that's uh, fantastic. Yeah. Yes, folks, uh, we will definitely post the URL into the video description so that you can go and connect with Joel and learn more. That is what we're all about here um, at the Content Careers University. Our thing is to create impact, innovate and always keep learning. So the continuous learning thing and, and having professionals and experts in a specific area keep teaching us and allowing us to be better um, one day at a time is what we're looking for. So. Don't worry, folks. The information will be posted for you later. You have to memorize or anything. Well, Joel, I want to thank you for your time. This was an amazing, amazing show. I'm going to go back and watch it myself because you've taught me a lot of things. Um, and before you go anywhere, I want to ask you to go ahead and wait backstage. Let me close with my folks here and I'll be right back with you. All right. All right, family. This is it content creators university um that's what we do right we bring superstars and again i want to thank the folks in the comment section charles jackson thanks for being here uh sammy a superstar thanks for being here jill alec uh thanks for being here dream world media don howard um everyone right everyone first lady cree thanks for being here folks and and commenting and being active in the comment section um i know this was very inf informative and audio is one aspect that we cannot compromise with because audio can either make your production or break your production so if you like this type of videos folks go ahead and smack the like button at the bottom there share this right share this podcast with a friend or family member that cares about upgrading or having the perfect audio setup so that people will connect with you more right that's what this is all about and like i was saying folks do not forget right do not forget that we do have our group that you can connect on go on facebook look for content creators university we have our private group connect and let's all build this community that's what we're doing here right i'll see you again next tuesday from the broadcast you be safe like i always say shalom bye-bye guys